first, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue a corner, entering the ring wearing red trunks with black trim, fighting out of O'Fallon by way of East St. Louis, Illinois. He weighed in at a trim and ready 117 pounds with a record of 20 wins, four losses. He has 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the former U.S. Olympian and current IBF number two ranked contender, introducing the challenger, Arthur Flash Johnson. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trunks with white trim, fighting out of Orwell by way of Cincinnati, Ohio. His weight, 117 and three quarter pounds. As a U.S. Olympian and bronze medalist, as a pro now, he is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with 20 wins, no losses, one draw, with 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making the fifth defense of his title, here is the undefeated IBF bantamweight champion of the world, known as the Cincinnati Kid, Tim Austin. Once again, Joe Cortez, referee in charge, now to give instructions. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. I want good sportsmanlike conduct. Obey my commands at all times. Remember, when I say break, you break clean, understand? Now, these trunks here. Yeah. These trunks are a little high here. Punches are still good. Same thing here. Everything is real good. If you hit there, punches are good, okay? Touch them up. Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Okay. Let's go. Tim Austin, a fast starter. His three main attributes are speed, accuracy, and smart. Superior boxing skills. Tremendous hand speed. Sharp counter puncher. Power in both hands with the big left hook. Arthur Johnson, reputation as a slow starter. Not known as a one-punch knockout guy, but excellent ability. Crafty, ring savvy, busy, throws a lot of punches. He's a boxer, but not a runner. He'll get involved. Usually he makes for good action-packed fights. Arthur Johnson. Well, Johnson spoke earlier yesterday that he, he has absolutely got to get into his rhythm early. And at 34, I believe he's correct. And what I can never understand, Bobby, is why they allow them to wear the same color trunks. Uh, one has a black stripe and one has black shoes, so. Yeah, there you go. We'll figure it out. Well, at first, Austin said starting off is a big concern. Then he said despite the layoff, he looked to set a fast pace, that the inactivity is more mental than physical. He's been training for this since April. His intent was to loosen up in the dressing room and be ready to dictate in the first round. Well, he's come out throwing some heavy punches. Right now, Johnson, maybe he's looking for that rhythm, but he hasn't gotten too offensive-minded. Johnson, the fighter with the black stripe and the black shoes, he told us he hasn't had a fight in 10 months because there are just not a lot of people out there who want to fight him. Soft-spoken guy who's an ordained minister and a singer-songwriter of contemporary Christian music, an aspiring broadcaster, but also has some cockiness. He says it'll be an upset if Austin beats him. Well, Austin right now is taking it to him, especially the straight left hand and right hook to the body. He said he was going to start early, keep a fast pace with the 34-year-old Johnson and see if he could hold up. He didn't believe Johnson could make it. Austin feels Johnson will need to make the adjustments to him and that his speed will be the big difference. Austin said, boy, he really missed fighting and after tonight, predictably, would love to unify the belts. Right-left combination upstairs by Austin. He'd love to fight WBA champion Paulie Ayala. But Ayala might be taking on Johnny Tapia in a rematch there. The division needs more stars for Austin's star to shine brightly. He can't get big names because there just aren't any right now. Paulie Ayala is another champion. Little known Vera Paul Saha from little known in the United States because he's from Thailand as the WBC champ. But others to watch are Mark Too Sharp Johnson when he gets out of jail, Jorge Julio, Johnny Breedall in that uh, category, Aiden Vargas, Danny Romero. But Romero's got to fight better competition. 
And those gaps, 112, 115, 118, on any given day, a fighter can mature on five or six or eight pounds, can switch him to full division, Steve. Yeah, 122, you got some good names. Eric Morales, Marco Antonio Barrera. Austin said he'd like to unify, then move up as high as 126, where the Prince Nassim Hamed is housed. Now, you see the way he's covering up like this here? He's trying to stay tight on you so you can't hit him with no clean shot. All right, start hitting his arms. All right, your double jabs on the arm. Remember we worked about that? He bent over this side on you, Tim. Fire your left uppercut under there. And then take it to your head. Give, give him a rinse. Come on. There you go. You're doing excellent, Tim. Just Don't gamble. All right. Don't you back up from this sucker. All right. I want you to rope. be first all the time. OK. All right, this is Angelo Dundee now. I mean it. I want first, first, right, gotcha, first. Gotcha. You block, I want you to count. All right. Don't block, 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 count that okay. sucker. All right. All right, don't let it all hang Thank out. All right, Tim, Tim. Well, one of the best boxing motivators of all time, Angelo Dundee. In the corner of Arthur Johnson, Tim Austin with, with Aaron Snowell, who was in Frankie Randall's corner when he upset Julio Cesar Chavez. Round two. Tim Austin, the champion in the all red. Arthur Johnson, the, the challenger in the red with the black stripe and the black shoes. Austin's dictating the pace and he's also dictating the distance. A lot of it behind his jab and nice combinations. Generally, the rule of thumb, uh, Bobby, as you know, against southpaws, move to your left, circle to your left. But you've demonstrated to me against certain southpaws, throw hooks to the body, then the right uppercut. How would you fight Austin? Well, I'll tell you what, with Austin, he, he has a nice sharp jab. You have to neutralize that jab and also his best weapon, that straight left hand. So if you move to your left, his left hand is not in line, in a power line. Your right hand would be, provided you can get there without walking into his right hook. Easier said than done. More stepping on the foot. I asked Tim Austin how he stayed sharp during the long layoff. He said he worked out in the gym with former junior welterweight champion Aaron Pryor, also a, a Cincinnati guy, worked a lot on his balance. Pryor also kept him psyched up and motivated. Pryor, one of the all-time greats before succumbing to personal demons. Now 44, destroyed two modern-day legends, Antonio Cervantes and Alexis Arguello. Not a bad guy to have in your corner. Kind of a slapping jab there by, by Austin. Yeah, once again, he likes to keep a certain distance. He uses that jab as a feeler, a point getter, but to keep hold that ahead, distance hold ahead down, okay? and the range he likes. Joe Cortez cautioning Austin not to hold Johnson's head down. He's got a bag of tricks, does Austin. He's only 29, but very crafty. 29's not that young in this business, team. I'm thinking about it yeah, okay, in the guys, general public. Johnson with a great amateur career, 86 world champion, 10-time national champion, 88 Olympics. He was ousted in the quarterfinals, and he beat Michael Carbajal and Kennedy McKinney before turning pro. Yeah, he feels that nothing short of a world title to be able to fulfill his dreams and fulfill what he did accomplish as an amateur, as a pro, it's fizzled a bit. Less than 30 seconds remaining in round two, scheduled for 12. The IBF Bantamweight Championship on the line for hooking right off the neck by Arthur Johnson. And then a good left-right combination of the body on the return by Austin. Austin jumping on Johnson now, really opening up here in late round two. But Johnson's game, he comes forward. That's it, Tim. You're doing perfect, brother. You see how he keeps going over to this side when you jab, Tim? Triple jab, bend your legs, and send. You got to send that left hand up under you. You start going to hit him over here, that body. See where the uh, feet, they always step on each other's feet. Southpaw, right-hander. Southpaw, right-hander. 
They both step forward with their lead feet. The lead feet are connected. A little back holding behind the head and hitting a uh, little warning to Austin. Watch the jab. He works in behind jab. Three jabs in the straight left hand. Left hand not as clean, but that's how he needs to work. And there again, with coming back with the jab in combination. Johnson just not answering with any punches, and he's certainly not making Austin miss enough. Well, as you would expect from these two 118 pounders, the action at times can be a fast and furious. Round three, scheduled for 12. Johnson, who relies more on technique than power, but he's willing to trade, which can be a dangerous prospect against a fighter like Tim Austin, who has power in both hands. And in particular, a wicked left hook. Or in this case, a right hook since he's a southpaw. See, right now, Johnson is not making Austin pay at all. Not putting enough pressure on him. Not, not on, getting guys. inside and forcing a different fight. He needs to make this a different fight. He can't win from out here. Still. That was a slip by Johnson. No knockdown. About a minute gone by in round three. Slipping a little pull down. Beautiful body work there by Austin. Straight left hand to the body, followed by a right hook. Every once in a while, Johnson wings a right, but it's very wide, and it's easy for Austin then to counter inside with a left-right combination. And it's usually one and done. He throws one big one, and then that's it. Not enough, no follow-up. Not good combination punching. Johnson, number two rated, born in East St. Louis, Illinois, now lives in O'Fallon, Illinois, has had three previous title shots. The last one in 98, he was knocked out in the first round by another lefty, Mark Johnson, for the IBF Super Flyweight title. This is his first title fight at 118. Won 200 amateur fights, lost 19. Tim Austin also with a, a stellar amateur career. Bronze medalist at flyweight at the 92 Barcelona Olympics. Right now, Steve, again, they're staying at the distance that Austin wants to be at. Johnson not cutting that down, not compromising or neutralizing any of the punches that Austin has in his arsenal. Paying for it, too. Losing round after round. Tim Austin, the champion, the busier of the two. Setting up that left with a nice double right jab. Again, there's that wide left hand by Johnson, and he opens himself up. And he got caught with a nice counter right hook from Austin. I think it stung him just a bit. Tim Austin, who's been off for around eight months, he said because fights just kept falling through, he was off 10 months before the previous fight, he said because of managerial and personal problems. Ho! Ho! Keep the punches up, my man. Okay, keep the punches up, all right? You gotta wake up now. You're making this guy do everything you're doing, nothing. You gotta stop. Arthur, I want you to take charge. Forget that goofy right hand. Here's a replay of the slip combination pull down. As Johnson's coming in, excuse me, yeah, as Johnson's coming in, the hands went right behind the head and just pushed him down. Johnson throws a wide left hook and gets countered with a right hook on the ear and a left uppercut, uppercut not landing too cleanly. And we got one toward the end of the round that goes south of the border. Austin makes a nice slip, but that one is low. That was right at the bell. As we look at Tim Austin, do you hear the, the words of Angelo Dundee to Arthur Johnson? Forget that silly right hand. He's been just so wide in telegraphing that, that punch. It has been very detrimental to Johnson. After three complete rounds, uh, Johnson has still failed to put together any effective combinations. And his individual punches just really haven't been that crisp. Austin's Chris, right there. Johnson right now, this round came out jabbing, came out stepping to Austin a little more. Starting to look like he might be effective, but 
backing right off as soon as Austin pumps out the jab. Austin with a left right off the head of Johnson, his fifth title defense. All four defenses by knockout. 16 of Austin's 20 wins have come within four rounds. And this is round four. Austin 20 on one with 19 knockouts. We talked about Austin fighting with a broken jaw against uh, Otile, and I'll tell you what, two against Sergio Aguila in 99. He stopped Aguila in nine, but he had to get off the floor to do it, Steve, so you notice as a champion of heart and courage. Yeah, he was totally dominating to that point. When he got caught with a countering hook by Aguila. That was in March of 99. In the fourth round, he came back to win TKO round nine. Midway through the fourth, scheduled for 12 for the IBF Bantamweight belt. Austin with some head fakes. Some interesting footwork there, too. He stepped twice, side to side, side to side, and then threw a right uppercut lead, which is sometimes dangerous. Two nice right hands by Johnson. His two best punches of the night so far. And back comes Austin with a left right to the head. Tim Austin smacking right left to the chest area of Johnson. I think Austin's punches much more effective. That counter overhand left was serious. It stung Johnson. You could see his feet wobble just a bit. Austin, even though he's just 118 pounds, unleashes with a lot of power. Long regarded as one of boxing's best kept secrets. He just needs to fight more frequently to get his name out there and to fight some champions, unify the titles. All the great fighters throughout history got their reputations by beating other great fighters. And Austin's going to be no different if he's going to be considered great or star. He has to beat great fighters. And he's very mindful of that. He's cognizant of ring history. He was talking very eloquently to us yesterday about American Jeff Chandler, the last fan away back in the 80s to unify the tunnels. He wants to do just that. Forget the guy's head. Forget the guy's head. Stay busy. Put the ice on him. You all right? Yeah. All right, don't blow your nose. Now put the ice back on him. In the back. Arthur, don't fight. Johnson landing a couple of good right hands in that round. Probably his best round, although I don't think he won the round, but clearly his best round. He lands a couple of nice right hands. There's a hook, counter hook. Trying, but not really getting too effective. Again, he's staying too far outside. This is too much of a distance for him. It's a better distance for Austin. Austin countering him, stepping around, and also missing a few counters. Ten. Austin has been the effective aggressor in this fight. Good ring generalship. That's what the judges look for as we enter round five. And neither fighter in any real serious trouble thus far in this IBF Bantamweight title fight. No knockdowns through the first four rounds. But uh, Austin has dominated. And he's just come out in this round with some bad intentions. Two strong punches to start the round. Almost as if he's looking to pick up the pace for that sixth round prediction he had talked about in the interview. Yeah, he said for some unknown reason, the number six stands out in his mind. Maybe, maybe he should visit the casino after. Either that or a lot of Good thing he's not fighting Andrew Six Heads Lewis. What's the backhand punch? What's the backhand? Who was supposed to be on the card tomorrow night against James Page for the WBA welterweight title, but that was scrapped because Page is a no-show. So managerial uh, dispute, contract dispute there. Less than two minutes remaining in round five. Johnson winging away, but getting nowhere. Austin comes right back. Johnson's hand speed not quite as good as Austin's, and he's missing with some of the shots, and some of the shots are just being blocked, and his hands are not getting brought back properly. He's getting countered very well by Austin. Ring 
rush could be a major factor for Arthur Johnson, who has not fought in about 10 months. His last fight, October of 99, a ridiculous majority decision over Jason Pyers. I saw the fight as well, Steve. I thought he dominated Pyers and won the fight clean. Austin continues to have his way, bipping and bopping off the head of Johnson. Nice overhand left there, too. Sort of shook up Johnson a little bit. Johnson just cannot find anything to land cleanly with, and it's frustrating. Austin's speed just too overwhelming. We saw that with Zab Judah and Teron Millette last week. And good defense here by Austin as well, able to duck away and block shots by Johnson. Austin with tremendous confidence, backpedaling and scoring. And uh, as fight fans know, it is not easy to fight going backwards. As Julio Cesar Chavez. Oh, tough body shot, a left right to the belly by Austin. Even slapping punches by Austin are getting through. That was a terrific left hand of the Adams apple by Austin. Hey, baby. There you go. Excellent, Tim. Excellent. That's what we're talking about. Now come off. Get that mouthpiece out of there, Rudy. Rinse him out. Watch Austin. See this jab? This is his jab hand right here. He takes it, jab, sets it up, jabs again, jabs again. Comes all the way across till he gets Johnson back then. Fires that straight left hand, keeping the distance, setting it up, working, keeping Johnson at bay, working in behind that jab. Another two jabs in that left hand. That wasn't as clean as the one he landed before, but that is exactly what he's supposed to do. Set up everything behind that jab. It keeps his distance, it gets the points, and it sets up a big power punch. Excellent job. We're in round six. All right? Let's, let's, let's pick the pace up. Come on, let's, let's start picking it up. All right, come on. And that's bad news for Arthur Johnson. If he picks up the pace even more, and this is the round Austin predicted he would knock out Arthur Johnson. Austin thoroughly in command over the first five rounds, and he looks very comfortable fighting coming forward or retreating. He is a tough target to catch for the veteran Johnson. Johnson doesn't have enough pop on his punches, and he's not getting enough of them through to get any respect. He's not getting his pound of flesh. Austin's keeping him at range with the jab, firing big wild shots whenever he feels like it because he's not paying for it. Johnson falling right into those punches by Tim Austin. Good left hand, a straight left to the head by Austin. It's been all Tim Austin. There hasn't been much offense. Good left hook off the shoulder, though. No offense from Arthur Johnson. They're both tall and lean fighters for 118 pounds. And I think that maybe, just maybe, Johnson has underestimated the strength and power that Austin possesses. Doesn't look like a big, strong guy. The punch is very crisp, very clean, and very well. I posed the question to you uh, earlier. Could the boxing skills and the experience and the ring savvy of Johnson be enough to offset the speed and power of Tim Austin? And it looks like it's an emphatic no. Look at that. Peppering his face is Tim Austin. I'll agree with that emphatic no. He's not doing any of the things he needs to do. He's not getting inside. Although it's a nice counter hook, but it's one and done. He needs to do more. He needs to be busier. He has to neutralize what Austin is doing well, namely the jab in the left hand. He's there. He's there right now. He's ready. Tim Austin in the all red trunks and Arthur Johnson, the challenger in the red with the pack stripe. And when we widen out, you'll see the black shoes of Arthur Johnson. Austin predicted, as mentioned, a sixth round KO, but interestingly, he only has one sixth round knockout in his 21 fight career. And none in the seventh round. Less than a minute remaining, round six. Now, if you watch their feet too here, Johnson's not really staying outside of Austin's right foot. He's allowing Austin to move to his right as he wants keeping Johnson in the middle of harm's way with that left hand. 
How frustrating this must be to Arthur Johnson. Straight left hand right on the nose by Austin. Johnson, an ordained minister, has also done missionary work. He turned pro at the late age of 25, nine years ago. Austin continues to stick and land with the jab. Coming up tomorrow night here on Showtime, Evander Holyfield versus John Ruiz for the vacant WBA Heavyweight Championship. Yesterday afternoon, they had the weigh-in. Let's take a bit of a look there. Holyfield at 37, turns 38 in October. Always looks in great shape. 221. 221 pounds for Evander Holyfield, 221. That's his heaviest ever. Previous high, 218. Now John Ruiz stepping up, 28. Jimmy Lennon, 224 pounds for Johnny Ruiz, 224. He weighed in three pounds heavier than Holyfield, seven pounds less than his last fight in December. Holyfield, a four to one favorite to beat John Ruiz tomorrow night, and you can see it right here on Showtime. Watch the step out of foot, watch the step out of foot. Watch the foot. Round seven, scheduled for 12 for the IBF Phantom White title. Tim Austin in charge. He's in the all red trunks. Johnson with the black stripe. Here's the online tally. No surprise here, Bobby. No, this is not a surprise whatsoever. Johnson hasn't done enough to even come close to winning a round. He just needs to work more, land more, and be more effective with everything. He's past the point of no return. He not only has to win every round here on out, but he has to win at least one of them by two points or more to win this fight. And he is not a knockout artist, Arthur Johnson. He has only 12 of his 24 of his 20 victories by knockout. And again, Austin landing repeatedly with lefts and rights looking ultra confident. Going for his 21st victory, he only has one blemish. It was a technical draw against Javier Diaz, which he avenged in the next fight. 20 on one with 19 knockouts. There's a good left off the left ear by Johnson, probably his best punch of the night. But again, Steve, it's just one big shot and that's it. He's looking to load up. He's not going to stop Austin. He doesn't have that kind of power. He needs to do combination punching, like Angelo Dundee said. Get on top of him, stay on top of him. Another left hand off the neck area by Austin. If you're wondering, Johnson's been down once in his pro career against Mark Tusharp Johnson in 98. That was a first round knockout for Tusharp. He was down once as an amateur. Two nice left hooks that landed there for Johnson. What happened on the third left hook was Austin slipped right under it and moved out nicely. Johnson continues to press forward, but not getting very far because of Austin's defense. And then he comes up big offensively. Look at this, Flurry. Austin's starting to make a statement here. Maybe he wants to close out the sixth round. Beautiful right hooks to the body, straight left hands right down the middle. Big body shots by Austin. Then he goes upstairs. Oh, he's around late on the prediction, Steve. Yeah. A barrage by Tim Austin. But to get the feeling, he'll accept it, even around later. Less than 30 seconds remaining. In the seventh round, a very difficult one for the challenger, Arthur Johnson, the number two contender. Former NABF flyweight champ, lost three previous tries at various world titles in two divisions. And this one not going well either. Final seconds of round seven. Another big one for the champion. There you go. Breathe easy. Breathe easy. Breathe up. That's it. Yeah. We just talked about the fact that underway and Johnson threw a left hook, caught Austin, threw a second left hook, caught Austin, and then Austin makes the adjustments. The third left hook goes right over his head. As we roll the tape, you'll see a beautiful hook. Gets Austin clean. 
Arthur tries it again, figures if the first one landed, maybe the second will. And now over the top of his head. Okay, this one's gonna go right over. Austin's gonna move out right to the side. It's gonna be sweet. Makes the adjustments, knows the hook's coming, slips out, steps. Looks very classy. That's ring general generalship at its best. Go to your left. Go to your left and fire. He's gonna do it now. Come, Come on, on. Arthur, this is for you, son. A very frustrated Angelo Dundee urging Johnson to circle to his left, which he's supposed to do against left-handers. And he hasn't been doing enough of it. We heard Teron Millette last week say he didn't do enough of that against Zab Judah, although I think it would have been immaterial anyway. One step another foot. Round eight, scheduled for 12, IBF Bantamweight Championship. Austin's won uh, every round from this vantage point. Austin from uh, the fighting city of Cincinnati that produced the great Aaron Pryor and Ezra Charles. One of the most underrated heavyweights of all time, Ezra Charles. For tremendous competition, was often outweighed, sometimes by as much as 40 pounds. He won every amateur tournament he ever entered, which is amazing. Once split open the nose of Rocky Marciano, the referee told Rocky, if it worsens, I'll have to stop the fight. Rocky knocked him out. In the next round, I believe. Little Cincinnati ring history in tribute to Tim Austin. There's that leaping left hook again by Johnson, starting to find a home, but once again, he's not a big puncher. He needs to follow it up with a right hand, then a second left hook and maybe an uppercut. Keep the combination going. And once again, we just saw Austin make the adjustments to slip out of the way of that hook. He knows it's coming. He's getting out of the way. No signs of ring rust whatsoever for Tim Austin. Austin doing a little dancing around now. He a lot of dancers, Stephen. Man. I wonder if maybe he's getting a little tired from all the punches he's done. Starting to look a little like Junior Witter, the Englishman who fought Judah on the Tyson Savarese card. But Austin with a lot more talent. Austin continues to throw and land that effective right jab. Boy, Arthur Johnson just looks weathered and frustrated. Another couple of good answers by Austin. Countering left to the stomach by Austin. Hard punches and great counters by Austin. Huge shots now. Combinations to the head by Austin. No answers by Johnson. A totally lopsided performance in favor of the champion Tim Austin. Austin putting on a show here, making a statement, displaying all of his main attributes as a boxer, his superior boxing skills, his power, his movement, his defense. But I'd love to see him in there with a guy like Paulie Ayala. Rounds in, brother. Come on, there you go. Relax, take a deep breath, let it out slow. Yeah, you're hitting them, Tim. How you feel? How you feel, brother? Huh? How you feel? Talk to me now. All right. All right, brother. Keep bite down on that mouthpiece. All right, Tim? Bite down on your mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. All right, make sure you bite down on that mouthpiece, all right? Don't let your mouthpiece go. Oh, all, still right. Me. all right. Mm -hmm. Looking good, Tim. Uh huh. Take it. We got two rounds you won, but we gotta knock this son of a bitch out. You know what I mean, son? And you gotta put punches together, man. You gotta knock Come him out. Come on. All right. This is not a tune up fight. Come on. Come on. Get it on now. All right. You got when that you left cut them off. off, you eat them right. up. Okay. You look at him in the gym. Come on. The frustration and the voice of Angelo Dundee gets stronger and stronger each round. Round nine, scheduled for 12. Trainers have a reputation for saying anything to motivate a fighter. To say one, two rounds might not be a stretch. It would be an out and out lie. Remember the words, you're blowing it, son? Here we go with round oh, yeah. Nine. Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearn. Number one. Angelo Dundee's words. As mentioned, Paulie Ayala hey, let's go. might be fighting Johnny Tappy at a catch weight in the very near future. And, and that might leave Tim Austin out in the cold. 
Well, that would be a terrific bantamweight fight between Austin and Ayala to unify those two titles. Well, it's not for lack of trying here by Johnson, too. Johnson keeps coming, keeps trying, but he just doesn't have the speed. He doesn't have the power. Perennial world rank contender, Arthur Johnson. Always seems to be the bridesmaid, not a one-punch knockout guy, and he is at the point in this fight where he's going to need a knockout. Has only 24 fights. Think about that. Only 24 fights. He's 34 years old, but that's because he started so late. He was 25 when he turned pro. He doesn't have as much experience as he needs to offset any of the tools right now that Austin has. He's starting to land that left hook a little bit of a game. It's only one and done. He's not a one-punch knockout artist. He's never going to floor and keep him on the floor. Austin with one shot. So this is a real uphill battle for Arthur Johnson. Austin continues to land and land effectively. Many of those are clean punches. Johnson's going to feel this in the morning. He is taking a beating. He hasn't been down. Very rarely one tonight has Austin one to even been Johnson, let me step on off balance. He must be so thrilled and happy to be back in the ring. It was a nice combination by Johnson. He followed up the right uppercut, and now he's chasing Austin, but not cutting off the ring. The only thing that this could be at this particular stage is a moral victory for Arthur Johnson because Tim Austin has won all of his title defenses by knockout. Oh, but one, and I'll tell you what, this one looks like a decision. Right now, this is Johnson's best round by far. But that streak looks to be in jeopardy tonight. However, he is cruising along to a very comfortable victory by decision. If Johnson stays on his feet. Heading for the bell. There you go. Sit back in the stool. Sit back in the stool, brother. Let's get you refreshed. How you feel? Uh, listen to your man. Hey Tim, just start sitting down in that pocket a little bit more. All right, don't don't be backing up, okay? Now we're we're in the tent. These are your rounds. Let's take control of this fight. Keep your hands up. Don't run into nothing. Let's start banging. All right. Let's get him out of here now. All right. He's around here. He's getting desperate. Now let's let now let's fight. forget this guy's body. Use it. All right. Mouthpiece. You gonna do it for us, son? Come on. Yeah. Do it for everybody. All right. All right. Come on. You're a champion. Use it. All right. We got this the tenth round for Bray. You only got three fucking rounds. Okay. Let's go. Got no time to waste. Got no time to waste. Let's go. Hang out. The always Let's go. Let's go. colorful Let's go. Angelo Dundee. Another thing that trainers are notorious for. <laughs> And that last round, Steve, is a good argument could be made that Johnson won that round. The effective aggressor landed his best punches, and, John, and Austin took most of the round kind of off. So an argument could be made that he won that round. Well, the superior skills of Tim Austin just overwhelming Arthur Johnson. It's not that Johnson isn't trying. He's just not on the same skill level as Austin. Oh, 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 whack right off the, the head with the right hand by Austin. Nice right hand right down the middle by Johnson, and he's trying a second one. And that right landing repeatedly. Even the soft probing shot is landing, getting through by Austin. There's the ticking right uppercut to the neck by Austin. And then he ducks under it. Attempt by Johnson and then lands a couple more. More and more Austin's catching on to that left hook that's coming. He slips under and counters real nicely. Once again, he does that. Pretty maneuver defensively, and then he comes rifling forward with a combination. <laughs> Mr. 
midway through the 10th round on what has uh, developed into uh, an easy night for the judges. Pretty good crowd on hand here at the Paris Hotel Grand Ballroom, the biggest ballroom in Las Vegas. Seats just under 9,000, and this is sort of a warm-up for tomorrow night's Holyfield Ruiz Heavyweight Championship fight, which you can see here on Showtime. As it turns out, not as only as Austin's offense too much for Johnson, but he can't figure him out defensively either. Starting to slip all the shots now, blocking everything else, and the counters are still right on the money. Austin just surgically dissecting and taking Johnson apart. And it started from opening bell. It's been very consistent. May not be a knockout for the champion, but he is telling the boxing world that he is back after the long eight-month layoff. And this is not second or third level opposition in Arthur Johnson. He is a solid veteran pro. We talked about earlier one of the keys to victory, that jab for Austin, he set up everything. Set up the right hook, the counters, the straight left, working perfect. There you go, put that ice back there in the back. Got it. Excellent, Tim. You're doing it, brother. Good job. Just Breathe and listen to the man. Here, take a little water, drink a little bit of it. That's it. Okay. Bobby, let's go inside the ropes and further dissect this fight. Well, let's watch the champion working behind the jab. Sets up the straight left hand. Working behind the jab again, sets up the combinations. The solid red trunks, the champion is doing his job working behind that jab, setting up his combinations, his counters, working up everything off that jab. Jab, right hand, left hook. Excuse me, jab, left hand, right hook. All right. Southpaw's always confused. Come on, he's gonna be desperate now. He's gonna be desperate, he's gonna come at you strong, he's desperate. Well, you heard the words of Aaron Snow announcing loudly to Austin as we enter round 11 that Johnson's desperate, he's gonna come at you. Austin has never been past 10 rounds in his 21 fight career. Johnson's been passed 10 six times. He's four up, two down with two late round knockouts. We have seen some late round come from behind knockout victories here on Showtime. But Arthur Johnson has given no indication that he has that kind of KO power. He just landed the best right hand he's thrown all night and he rocked Austin a little bit. But again, he's not a one punch knockout artist. And it was one and done. It was not on top of him, but then he followed. And by the same token, he hasn't even managed to connect with Tim Austin cleanly in this fight. Or at least it seems that way. Get the hands out. Get him out. Go on. We are into the championship rounds, a fight that is being completely controlled by the champion in the solid red trunks, Tim Austin. Big right hook there by Austin. I think he had Johnson in a little bit of trouble. Arthur Johnson's fourth world title shot. Are there just some fighters, Bobby, that just cannot get over that title hump? You know, it did happen, Steve. Sometimes the championship opportunities come too late. Sometimes they come in a division where you have a guy like a marvelous Marvin Hagler who just dominates for so long. Nobody beats him. Austin spinning Johnson around and hammering away with lefts and rights. That was probably the best give and take exchange by both fighters in quite some time. Both landing clean, hard, solid punches and counter punches. As we approach the final minute of round 11. If you're just tuning in, Tim Austin, the champion in the All Red, had predicted a sixth round knockout. Nevertheless, he has been in complete command throughout. Austin's first fight in about eight months. And his fifth title defense. He's undefeated. Go, 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 go. 
continues to land with those one two and one two three combinations uh -huh. oh. Johnson with a swing oh. and a miss and almost wound up in the first row and Austin ever the gentleman just stepped away and didn't even swing he swung there though a few of those punches though blocked by the forearms and gloves of Johnson I'll tell you what though, Austin, who's had the long layoff, looks just as sharp here in the 11th as he did in the first. In the oil, I'll tell you what, in the corner, that was probably the best combination by both fighters. Both landed pretty cleanly. Johnson getting in some of the best shots, but again, he's not hurting Austin. He's not getting the pound of flesh, and certainly not going to stop him. Super slow mode is a straight left hand being eaten by Johnson. He comes back with a nice body shot. He lost the combination, but he got some. He got some respect, but it's too late. Little slip. <laughs> That's that sneaky slip we're talking about. He's getting adjusted to that left hook. He's Austin. He's out of it. So much so that Johnson's falling out of the It's the 2000 version of the rope a dope. Well, here we go. This is it. Arthur Johnson obviously needs a dramatic knockout to win this fight and take the championship away from Austin. They touch gloves for the 12th and final round. Tim Austin totally dominating the fight. And the only way Johnson can win is by putting Austin on the floor. Does he have it in him? He's not only got to put him on the floor, Steve, he's got to keep him there. Right. If he knocks him down twice in a round, he's still not going to pick up enough points in this round to bring him even close to even. But Johnson just can't seem to even get close. Austin's just too fast. He's got the hand speed, the foot movement. But I think you see here a nice right hand by Johnson. I think you see here a relatively young 34 in Johnson. Keeping a good pace. His best rounds have been the last three. As mentioned, he has had two late round knockouts, but not against people the caliber of Tim Austin. Austin dancing around, flinging the left, scoring. Austin winning this fight for a good part in retreat. How about that left uppercut to the jaw by well, that, Austin? That's where the phrase effective aggressor, effective aggressor. You can come in and get beat up. Muhammad Ali beat a lot of men on the way in, beat him up well. Oh, a straight right hand out of nowhere by Johnson that got the attention momentarily of Austin, who continues to backpedal. But he's telegraphing a little bit now to his ladies tired and it's one at a time. Oh, another straight right hand by Arthur Johnson. Austin eating some leather here in the final round with a minute. And Austin continues to fight going backwards. Even as Austin's backing up, Steve, when he stops the fight, he doesn't stop with one. He stops with two, three, and four punch combinations. A case of too little, too late for Arthur Johnson, but countering with rights and lefts and peppering the head of Johnson, Tim Austin. Good straight left hand of the head by Austin. Final ten seconds of this championship fight. And it's a good comeback fight for Tim Austin after the long bout of inactivity. All Tim Austin. It goes the distance. Walk around, Austin. You gave it a hell of a shot. Walk around. Probably safe to say the two sharp Johnson KO loss was just an aberration, not the rule. Because Austin, very credible, very good champion.
and unloaded quite well. Johnson absorbed it all. But this will be Austin's first title defense. That is hey, not a knockout, but you know what? He'll take it after the long layoff. When it comes to titles, a win is a win by an inch or a mile. Yep. And you know that. It'll be his fifth successful defense of the IBF Bantamweight belt, which he's held since July of 1997. He went out and did what a, ch a great champion like him. Good job, man. He went out and performed anyway in spite of not the cause. Manager Carl King on the left of your screen with Tim Austin. And he got some rounds that he needed. You know, he hasn't been in the ring a long time. He got the rounds. That's right. Yeah, you hear Aaron Snow. Huh? That's okay, man. Ten months, man. We Jimmy Lennon Jr. standing by, ready with the scores. Yeah. Let's go to Jimmy. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here at Paris, Las Vegas, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. All three judges agree and score about exactly the same at 120 to 108, all three in favor of the winner, and still the IBF Bantamweight champion of the world, the Cincinnati Kid, Tim Austin. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. A landslide, unanimous decision, 120 to 108, across the board for the Cincinnati Kid, Tim Austin. No contest in favor of Mr. Austin. He goes to 21 0 and 1. Let's go to Jim Gray. Jim. All right. Thank you very much, Steve. Tim, congratulations. Thank it's you. been 236 days since we've seen you in the ring. Did it feel like it'd been that long for you? Oh, yeah. I felt a little ring rust. You know, I'm just glad to be back. You know, Arthur Johnson is a great fighter. And um, I'm just glad I went 12 rounds for the first time. And Were I you surprised like you had to go that long? Yeah, I was a little surprised. You said the sixth round, right? Yeah, sixth round, you know, but my hand was, um, I fractured my hand in training, and it was hard for me to, you know, land a good shot like I want. I would just land it out there, so. Which hand? My left hand. And how is it right now? Well, it's a little sore and everything, but, you know, I'll be back. All right, you're going to be back. Polly Ayala, will he be next? Yes, hopefully we can right. unify the title. Polly Ayala, you know, let's do this, you know. If, if he got What are we doing, Carl? He, we won, we won, Polly. Carl King. We want Polly Ayala, we, and we want to unify. I think Tim Austin is the best band weight in the world, and we're out to prove it tonight. And, and for the rest of this year, we want to keep busy, and we want to keep my man active, and I think we're going to do something great, Jim. Timmy, will you move up in weight, and, and has it hurt you that Johnny Tappy has left the division? Well, you know, it was a little um, sore, sore to the, um, to the um, division. So, you know. And the pocketbook. I'm yeah, in a pocketbook. <laughs> but, you know, we can keep this thing alive, you know, unifying the titles and everything, make this weight class exciting. So you're generally pleased with your performance, and will you continue to fight more now? Uh, or what, what will you do if you can't get this fight with Ayala? Well, Jim, I'm, I'm pleased with my performance today because, you know, like, I, like you said, I've been off on a layoff, and um, I went 12 rounds, and I felt, I felt strong still in the 12th round. Um, what are we going to do next, you know? Like Carl said, unify the title you know, and make these things happen like that. All right, congratulations right, to you, Tim, thanks. Carl, Aaron. Right, Look forward to seeing you. Back to All you, right, Steve. Right. Thank you. Just spit it right in there, don't worry about it. Up your hands, be sharp, change your angle. Give him that, hey, hey, come on. And snap your punch. So you saw the copy.